I was just trying to reflect and I see it is 4th July and I know many of us can recall Saba Saba. So I think we can start beginning in a Saba for today because this is a, a landmark. It's a landmark. Don't take it lightly. You are sitting here with a government officer, very senior government officer, to think through on matters of international relation. And not only matters of international relation, matters of international relations that are actually very violent, not necessarily with guns, but with intellect and designs and bargaining and lobbying and when you hear of the international financial architecture, it's a very, very complex design. I want to address especially those from the universities. I hope you are doing these issues of economics. That uh, there is so much to talk about GDP versus poverty. There is so much to talk about uh, good economics versus bad uh, governance. But there is so much to know the root cause of these issues and how to deal with them. And unless we all have a formula and a framework of where all actors can be able to build a, a, a process of strengthening one another, we are going to continue to be disadvantaged as the so-called people of the South. And I say this very authoritatively because I've been in this track since the, the dawn of this century from the debt campaign that started very vigorously from 1999 to, uh, uh, to the turn of the century. And why I celebrate today, it is because we have government uh, solidarity and support and not only by uh, encouraging us, but also participating, having a government officer to come and sit among us for this particular program as it is scheduled. Because certainly, even if we are starting now, since the invitation, all the attention and uh, the concern has been to prepare to come for this particular uh, uh, session. So I don't take it lightly, and I would wish that uh, uh, our sister uh, Kavisi, you... Kivisi, you really take our, our humble submission of this recognition and uh, appreciate that we will go longer than we have worked together. And this I say because many people might not have stated it, but from our new constitution and all these other many things that are happening, I can uh, perhaps once again also authoritatively say we are uh, on the track for what I would call second generation uh, rights. We've been able to go through the, the first generation, political and civil rights, and that's how we've talked all the 90s, and that's how we have been able to come up with this new constitution. And we've seen the new constitution is not going to deliver the expectations because we must breathe life to that new constitution as Kenyans. And part of that breathing life is this kind of this exercise. And we have this benefit and privilege to engage on matters that are going to lead us to issues that can deliver this that I'm calling the second generation of rights, economic, social, and cultural rights. Not just as rights, but as entitlements. Because this is how we are going to organize ourselves on how we become good stewards of our own resources, how we are going to work together in mobilization of these resources in matters of access, creating wealth, and distributing that wealth. And that's why responsive borrowing charter becomes another better tool that is going to unify us more and help us to talk to one another and to work to each other and to access to even to others who might just be there to receive the kind of products that we have been able to produce. So I take this opportunity to indeed uh, remind ourselves that uh, it might not be very historical, but I want to say it is very historical to be here to validate this charter as an instrument that is going to help all the actors on how they are going to work together and how they are going to continue engaging so that we can be able 
to locate very strongly our self-determination as a nation. Because if you cannot steward your resources well, if you cannot be able to negotiate with others in peace and in harmony, if you cannot be able to give and be given without jeopardizing your dignity and without being a beneficiary without ruining the benefit of other people and not allowing your benefits to be ruined, then we will continue to complain like we have been complaining. But I am here with a testimony that another uh, long, long journey is opening, but this is not a journey of, of tears and anger. This is a journey of life fulfillment to make a good contribution to our nation. And with that, I can only but say, you are the people to do it, but I want you to continue appreciating that it's the high time we know how we work with our government and every other person in supporting to be able to be that nation can be among many other nations. Let you not be cheated that there must be a, a, a conflict between civil society and government. It is only historically when we were bargaining for political and civil rights, especially for participation at the turn of the century with the 90s, that the history of this country had put us to a dispensation where we were not talking to one another. But with the new constitution, you can talk to anybody. But the issue is, what are you talking to that somebody? And what is that somebody talking to you? So this uh, 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 perhaps uh, misinformation that civil society are just to engage with government. I think it is how you engage and how you stay engaged. And I'm saying it is time for us to rise to the occasion to give support system to our civil servants so that we also receive what they can give to us as civil society. And in that way, we will be able to create the nation we are all out there because a healthy nation is a benefit to everyone. So I hope I have made some little sense and with that I welcome you to this session and I hope Kenya Debt Reef Network can continue to strengthen this framework so that all the actors can be able to participate as they are required in achieving economic justice for the good of all. Thank you very much.